Hello, caffeinators. Welcome back to another episode of the Vet Tech Tap Room. Um, Dave, I know it's it's still you know nine fifteen in the morning here, but I'm <laughs> it, I'm busting out a breakfast IPA. It's uh, it's noon here, and <laughs> I'm I'm still trying to focus on my diet. I've actually done pretty well with it. Uh, I started in April when I came back from the, from New Hampshire and I've lost, uh, 24 pounds since then. So, uh, I'm, I'm running in this North Carolina humidity and heat and that'll do it. I I feel like, yes, I'm probably losing, uh, actual weight, but I'm, you know, I weigh myself right after the run. So I'm, I'm at my lowest because I have zero water. water. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, but uh, I mean, I, well, I'll be honest, dude. I didn't know that you had 24 pounds to lose. So uh, kudos to you. I, I still feel like I've got, I, I was showing people pictures. The first time we did the whole 30 diet, um, I lost 17 pounds and I was super skinny, like very skinny. Um, I showed pe- some people pictures of the end of that and they're like, that doesn't even look like you. Um, so I, and I'm probably about, I don't know, 10 ish pounds away from, from where that was. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to keep at it. Um, I'm, I'm reserving my, my beer consumption to, uh, during bulls games. Uh, <laughs> no offense to the tap room, but I I'm sticking with my coffee and, uh, I'm, I'm planning to run outside in, in gosh, it's 85. Now it's going to be probably a little bit warmer by the time I'm running, but yikes, yikes. Well, it's good. I will, I, I will, uh, I will drink in your memory i have yes, a um yes this is called juice box brawler it's juice uh, box okay my my place i love in massachusetts treehouse they now do like yeah. a breakfast ipa series where they're like finished on few fruit purees or, or whatever and then they're triple ipas yeah um and this is the first one i've had and it's delicious. I, is treehouse the one that i went to when i was no, up in i don't no, think that you've was been a treehouse it was something different, but it was a it was a massive brewery. It was it was gigantic, and I would love to go back there. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of it. It was in Canton, Canton, Massachusetts. Oh, that Anyways. might have been Trillium. Trillium, exactly. Yes, yeah. My Trillium my buddy is... lives like two streets down from from Trillium, and and he took yeah. me there. And I'm like, this place is amazing. Yeah. I'm going to stay Trillium is day. the other like big one in in Massachusetts yep. for sure. Yep. So yeah, yeah, good stuff. So maybe next time we'll get to Treehouse. Heck yes, <laughs> yes. Make sure there's four locations now throughout Massachusetts. So okay. you'll I'm, I feel okay. like I'm advertising for them, but um, the... <laughs> but yeah, you'll you'll definitely uh, enjoy it. They have all styles of beer, and it's all fantastic. Yeah. So awesome. Um, well, we wanted to uh, jump on here and um, you know talk about our, our our last couple episodes, yeah. tease a couple things we've got coming up. There's some really cool stuff happening. Yeah. Um, so let's let's go ahead and get started. Um, first, let's kind of look back at our June episodes. Yeah, we like... had we had Jen DeForge, um, and and amazing that she's teaching high school students about 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 veterinary technology and and getting them to pass their veterinary assistants. Uh, yeah. Yeah. tests which yeah. i think is amazing that's that's such a great way to to get people into the field kind of at an early age and get them understanding what 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 the what the profession is really yes that's what i actually really really liked is it sounds like she's having very honest conversations yeah. with the students about current life as a veterinary Mm -hmm. professional, whether that's an assistant, a technician, veterinarian, all of the other things that you could, and, and and kind of like what we talk about on our podcast, educating them about all the things that they can do, not just clinic life so that they know getting out into the field, there are options. It's not just, okay, well, I don't want to work in this clinic anymore. I guess I need to find something else to do with my life, which I think so many of us have run into at one point (laughs) or another. Um, and also just the, the difficulties of it and, and actually having, you know, honest conversations with them. So I, I thought that was, I mean, we, we've had a handful, at least episodes about education. Mm-hmm. you know, in, in this podcast. And I think we're going to have more. Um, yeah, I know yeah. we have a couple other ideas too. Um, and it's always just fascinating. To, number one, because, you know, I think about back on some of the education episodes we have, those people are so passionate, like oh, yeah. about yeah. teaching vet tech ed and, and the programs that they're steering or the classes that they're teaching or what have you. And those are the people that we need. Oh, definitely. Roles, yeah. Right. I mean, um, you know, I know hopefully we're going to be talking to Liza soon about uh, yep. the program yep. she's doing. And um, I know we, we want to talk to uh, one of my friends, the program I went through 
which is in a different iteration now, but talk about alternate route in California mm-hmm. and some other things. So it's always though, just really, really informative, but also to me, <laughs> the thing that I think I always take away from it is like how different education is across this country. And like, we need to fix that. Like I, yeah. It, yeah. it needs to be like, if you go to school in California, Oregon, Massachusetts, North Carolina, Texas, wherever it is, like, yeah, you're going to have different teachers and you might learn a little bit different things, but like there needs to be a standard of education yeah, yeah, and like yeah. a direction. And, uh, it, cause yeah, that's, that's one thing I always kind of take away is like, this is fantastic, but also. Well, and the other thing that I thought of, you know, talking, talking to Jen was, was like, how many guests have we had on the show that said, I didn't even know what a veterinary technician was. And right. I mean, at least half of them, probably more, mm-hmm. that, that had no idea what a vet tech was. They yeah. thought veterinarian was the only path to mm-hmm. get into the into the field. Uh, and, and, and this gets them from that early age where they're like, oh, there is other things than just right. a veterinarian. Um, and, and, and getting them into that profession and getting them into that because, I mean, most of our guests say that, oh, I, want, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. And then I realized that Oh, the techs are the ones that are actually getting to do all the stuff and getting to right. to uh, do all the treatments and all that stuff. Right. So awesome, right. And, awesome that that she's yeah, getting them so early. For sure. And I was thinking too, like you know, you think about high school education and going to you know a guy, career guidance counselor or do or doing that kind of stuff, and like, how does that person in that role, like the guidance counselor, actually get information about all the jobs or are, are available right. like if they don't know veterinary medicine they're not going to know about us and i feel no. like navta and the state associations need to put together materials and just basically cold send it to every high school yeah. in the state and just give the guidance counselors right. something to have that like so yes obviously there's becoming a veterinarian but there's also this whole other side of it and I think yeah, I don't somehow, I don't know how they get that information other than either. just just maybe there's some like uh, I don't want to say group chat but like there's there's some centralized place for guidance counselors that says here's here's your career options right and maybe we're just not on that list right yeah maybe so anyway a really really great episode if you yeah. haven't uh, haven't checked it out definitely do so and then our most recent episode um, with uh, Chong Suvia from Malaysia um, yeah. Uh, that was eye-opening wow. yes. like wow yeah i mean we talk about utilization all the time in the united states and and yeah how poor we feel that is and how much that needs to improve and how much it could be better and uh, i think these international episodes are always really eye-opening to me to know kind of around the world i think a right. lot of us struggle with the same things just kind of different levels of it and but also again like the passion she has to yeah. try to make change like it was very very inspirational episode well and just just thinking of utilization like i, I think back to when i first started as a vet assistant you know being called a tech but i was an assistant and the stuff that we were allowed to do is and, and I, I thought that was like eons ago. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it was eons ago. It was 25, 26 years ago. But it was at, at like the lowest uh, right. that I can imagine. And they're not allowed to do even stuff that I was allowed to do, mm-hmm. which is just it's mind blowing to me that, right. you know, and, and she said that she they work like 12, 13, 14, 15 hour yeah. days and. My first thought was like, wow, how your mental health must be so struggling. But the other side of it is, well, if you're not really doing anything but holding animals, then yeah, like the the mental stress on it is probably a lot less. Right. Um, uh, Obviously, just being at work for 15 hours a day is it's got to be stressful. But yeah, but then you know the the flip side to that coin is is seeing the patients struggling while the veterinarian is doing other things and yep. and you're not allowed by law yeah. to do certain to things do stuff, you're, yeah. not, you're not being trained to do certain things and it's like you want to provide more help mm-hmm. and you just can't you're not you allowed can't. to like that's going to take its own toll Ugh, um, yeah. and be its own you know source of mental stress and frustration so um yeah i i, I we haven't done but you know maybe what three or four, maybe five international episodes and Mm -hmm. we're in the works to try to do a couple of others. Um, And I really hope we can continue to do them if we can just 
find the right people because it's so fascinating um, and, and really just eye opening. And, and I think oh, yeah. there's, there's more dialogue. I mean, she's, you know, she's doing a distance learning program from Purdue here in the U S like there's gotta be other ways we can kind of collaborate and yeah. kind of help push each other forward, continue to move the needle around the globe. And it's just always fascinating discussion to see what else is going on around the world. And, um, yeah, I, I, I really, really enjoyed that episode and it was yeah. fantastic to hear about the creation of Mavna and the yeah. work that they're doing to, you know, like we talked to, to Rochelle not long ago, what she's doing with the Puerto Rican, yeah. uh, kind of trying to get a Puerto Rico vet med association going. And it, it just, and I think too, some of those, like, if the, if those guests could kind of collaborate with each other and, and talk about where they're at in the process and getting some of that stuff going, yeah. I think that's really cool too. And then we've kind of put some people in contact and, and those kinds of things. So yeah, we, we talk about like state to state, like collaboration, like you, you should be collaborating with, mm-hmm. you know, your neighboring States and getting all that stuff, but expand that out to the world. It should be doing right. the same thing, but right. it's, it's harder. I think it's harder because, you know, we're talking about different countries and maybe there's a language barrier. Maybe yeah. there's mm-hmm. different rules and regulations because we, I mean, yeah. I, listening to her and talking to her, uh, my, my American privilege was put in check because I was like, oh, yeah. we are, we don't know how good we have it. Yes, um, true. You know, we have a lot of struggles. We have a lot of things that we're working on, but man, we have it so easy compared to some other places. So, so much so. better, but like still so far to go. Yeah. Still Um, so far to go. And we're never going to get it right. Um, that's like, we always want to be working on improvement, but, um, so I hope we can continue to do these episodes. If you're listening, if you're listening from abroad outside the U S we don't care what country you're in. We want to hear about what it looks like to be a veterinary nurse, a veterinary assistant, a veterinary technician, whatever title you have in your country, like your roles, your responsibilities, education like we want to talk about that so if you're listening and you hear this in another country by all means please email us it's on our website vettechcafe.com email us at vettechcafe at gmail.com we would love to have that conversation with you wherever you're listening from Um, i was talking to someone yesterday for um uh the international credentials committee for for avect and um asking me questions about France, uh, because yeah, there's, I, I saw that discussion on, on the Facebook group. Yeah. yeah. So there, there's some restrictions that f- I, I think the way that it's worded is that, uh, technicians in France can't make a hole in an animal. <laughs> I, I think that's a, a, a simplified version of it, but like blood draws, placing catheters, um, central lines, cystocentesis, all those things. Uh, and, and me and this person, Andrew, Andrew Pace, I don't know if you know her, um, we kind of went through the skills list and said, okay, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Can't do that. Can't do that. Right. Uh, and, and kind of figuring out, cause the question came up of, can people from France, technicians from France go for their VTS because of the skills list and the, and the restrictions that they have. And we determined that they can, um, you have to do 29 of 38 skills. Mm-hmm. And if you take out, um, the the things that are quote unquote putting a hole in an animal, uh, there are thirty skills that they can actually yeah, I was do. So that pretty much just have to do uh, so all it just of the barely rest. makes yeah. it. Yeah. So um, I would love to talk to someone from France about Heck yeah. about their their limitations and yeah. what they can do and you know, do. Absolutely. You know, la- last I counted, we had downloads from like eighty five different countries or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. there are. You know, we've talked to maybe five or six. So there are still about 80 of you out there from countries <laughs> we haven't uh, talked to yet. Please, please, please. Um, yeah. If you'd be interested in having that conversation, reach out because we would love to have that discussion. Yeah, about definitely. What it looks like to to be on this side of the profession in the country you live and work. And um, we, we always have people, you know, they're always concerned about uh, the language barrier and yeah. what have you. Like it's... It, that's all and, like, and we, we, we welcome that yeah we welcome yeah. that like yeah so um yeah it's like please just reach out we would love to have that conversation yeah. so and, and we'll, we'll figure i mean we've got we'll figure it out we've and, got some of that we're talking to from japan mm-hmm. um that is concerned about the language barrier right. and we're like we'll you figure know, maybe it we out. can have somebody to, to translate yeah. and 
yeah and we'll make things a little bit easier but um, yeah we... and and we we put ourselves out frankly in terms of timing like i think i was up at 4 a.m to yeah. record yeah with, you were sovia yeah. um so like don't worry about being halfway around the world and yeah the time we'll make difference it work. and we we will figure it out on our end to make it work so um speaking of which kind of looking at our july episodes we have another yeah we have another international guest yeah, this, is, so, this one's so from the uk from the uk yep so someone that suggested us uh this person uh i forget who who suggested it to us i don't remember now i don't we've either. been trying it, to, it, to nail down this episode yeah. for a while and we've been backed up and some other stuff's happened i think so, since january we started yeah, we basically, started with this i'm pretty so, yeah. sure like very early 2023 so it's finally yeah. happening we actually record that tomorrow tomorrow um, yeah and uh, so that'll be super cool. And then, um, our second episode for July, we've already recorded, or, yes. um, which is, uh, f- which was a phenomenal discussion, Oh yeah. um, uh, just about c- workplace culture and cultivating that and positive thinking and, and what have you, you, um, you definitely know this person, if you read um, any of the vet tech journals that come around like today's veterinary nurse or mm-hmm. today's veterinary practice, DVM 360, those kinds of things. He always, I forget who suggested him. Uh, was, was frankly, Liz? everybody, I think Liz well, yeah, and, every, yeah. and, and, and every, he comes very highly recommended from lots of people. Um, yeah. and we were so grateful for, for his time to, to yeah. come chat with us. Uh, but I, I, that was a very, very enlightening discussion yeah. too, just about, working in vet hospitals and you know i mean we talked about some of the bullying stuff in our mental health episode we didn't really talk about bullying specifically but we kind of bridged that gap a little bit in terms of just like workplace culture and, and yeah, all of that. yeah so really 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 cool discussion so and then we our... have a couple of of uh guest spots that mm-hmm. we are going to be on other podcasts yes um, we are uh one of them um you know if you if you're a a caffeinator that listens pretty much to most all of our episodes. You, you know, we like to banter back and forth with one podcast in particular. Mm -hmm. Um, That's as far as I'll go with that. Um, And then the other one um, has been a guest on our show before. Very, very uh, popular. Last year? Was it last year? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Veterinary personality, veterinarian um, has their own podcast. Um, And we're going to do a collaboration for, for vet tech week. Um, So, which so that probably won't be out yet for a while, but we're going to record that um, this month. Both this of month. those, yeah, both well, of those I, will I, be this month. I think one of them is going to be next month, but yeah. Um, and then speaking of Vet Tech Week, Dave, that's a decent segue there. We're doing yeah. our own kind of special thing um, where we're going to be. We're going to actually release kind of mini slash short episodes every day for Vet Tech Week, um, and not to get too far into it but basically we are going to talk to a different veterinarian in every episode to talk about how awesome vet techs are um, and just get their thoughts on yeah. us our role the relationship what, what all of that so we're going to have some very just more brief episodes so you can definitely digest those over your lunch break yeah. make sure you take your lunch breaks <laughs> um, and we'll be recording those, uh, I think August, September, and then we're going to put yeah. those out over vet tech week. So we'll have much more information about that. Um, a little we haven't even road, come up with a question list yeah. or we, we've got yeah. an idea of who the people are, but that's about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're still working on that, but, um, so some really, really cool things coming as far as episodes kind of in the queue. Um, I know sometimes you guys get worried out there that, uh, what are we going to do next? Or are we going to continue to do this? We're not going we anywhere. We get worried the, sometimes too. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the episodes aren't going anywhere. We've got a lot of really cool stuff coming. So yeah. um, what else we got? Uh, we've got the Not One More Vet uh, yes, race, around the, race the around the world. I forget the dates of that. Um, uh, but uh, I, I posted that um, last week, I believe. And people were like, are you going to make a team? And had a little bit of a, uh, a snafu with, with not one more vet in terms of making a team, but I, I've got it sorted out now. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm going to post that tomorrow, um, our team. So uh, let's see, registration ends October 7th. Uh, so the, the race starts September 1st and goes through October 8th. Um, and that's going to be right in the middle of IVAX and yeah. Uh, I usually like to run at IVEX, like either at, at a gym or, or outside. Or at least the 5K. Or... or at least the 5K. I don't do the 5K anymore because I do it by myself now. And 
getting up at 6 a.m. for a 5K that I'm doing by myself is not as fun as it used to be. And I'll, t- I'll tell you what. I'm, you I'm, not, do it? I'm not speaking this year. Um, okay. So I, I'm actually just an attendee this year. Um, so it would be much easier. Like if, if you want to do it, I'll run it with you. All right. Like let I, me, you're going to leave look at... me in the dust. No, and so no. I don't know that I will actually be running with you, but I will. I will, I will participate anymore. with you. <laughs> I'm not fast anymore, Jeff. Dude, you said you're um, going to run in the North Carolina heat today. I'm going to run downstairs and get another beer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there's a big difference there. Uh, let me let me look at when it actually is. Look make at sure it, it doesn't and look at with your schedule because like... you've got a lot going on that week. So yeah, I'll, I know I'll my let... speaking my speaking times. Yeah. I think are all on two different days. So. If it's not yeah. that day, then I'll do it. If it is that day, then yeah. we'll figure I'll let you figure out. that out. But if it works for you, yeah. let me know, and I will register for it, and okay. we'll do it. And frankly, probably Molly will do it with us, too, because oh, nice. she, yeah. she's going to attend this year, too. So, well, and, and, um, and the struggle that, I, that I'm that i anticipating is that, is that I've I've never run in Colorado before. That's the altitude. The yeah. altitude, so... Yeah. Maybe we'll both be walking it. Who knows? Maybe, maybe <laughs> we'll see. But uh, yeah, so, um, you know, caffeinators too, um, Ibex, um, yeah. just kind of separate conversation. If you're going to be at Ibex, we're going to be there. Um, I would really like to try to figure out something that where we can do like a meet and greet kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, like go to a um, bar or something like that. Go to a bar or a brewery and just hang out and do some stuff. Um, I think it'd also be really cool to like last year record a tap room episode live like yep. we did. Um and I got another idea about recording another episode there that I'll talk to you about offline. Um, mm. But uh, so I think that'd be super fun. Okay. But there's some logistical stuff we got to figure out. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we will both be at IVEX. Um, you are doing VSPN course. You just gave away two registrations. Yep. Yep. Uh, that is, oh gosh, that's this Thursday. And the um, course is... The course is on SERS and sepsis. Okay. Uh, it's and on so the this 6th. Thursday, so the course probably is open. Course is open now. Um, Can the they still live... register for it? I believe I so. Yeah, the I live so. session is uh, uh, July 6th at 8.30 p.m. Um, it's an Eastern hour and a half. Time. Eastern time. Yep. Uh, I hope it's Eastern time. <laughs> uh, it's an hour and a half course. Um, and there's like discussion afterwards. The VSPN courses are amazing. Oh, there's um, such I, a great platform. I, I love giving the talk, but I, I, I think I like more like after the lecture. Mm-hmm. The the it's it's open for like a week or so after, mm-hmm. where attendees will ask me questions about that and yeah the those message board amazing. is just yeah. yeah if you guys haven't done a VSPN course um especially if you're looking for CE like Dave has done some courses I've done some courses from our standpoint. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. The, the discussion, like the message boards, there's a couple things like you have to do for, you know, to get your certificate and participation and stuff. But um, even if you can't attend the lecture live, it doesn't matter. Like there's a recording. You can still mm-hmm. get all your credit and everything. But, I mean, literally some of the best questions I've ever and discussion I've ever had as a presenter at a conference of any kind has been on those discussion boards yeah. after the lecture. Um, and, and those discussion boards make my lecture better because I yes. take those things. I'm like, oh, I probably should put that in the lecture. Yes, it absolutely. makes everything so much better. Absolutely. I did a, um, a toxicology course for them, and I did a whole hour and a half presentation on rodenticides. And somebody asked in the message boards after the fact, and they're like, what about the corn gluten rodenticides, you know, basically the non-toxic type? And I was like, mm-hmm. I never thought of that. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much for calling that out. I'm going to create yeah. two or three new slides to talk about. Yeah, exactly. You know this because I never thought of that. Like, so it's just fantastic courses. It's a fantastic format. Um, so Dave's got his Sir Sepsis lecture registered today. You gave away a couple registrations. We yep. had a contest yep. on Instagram. Ran a duck race. Um, <laughs> super fun. Um, and then I will be speaking at uh, Delaware VMA, um, which is it's on a Tuesday in November long about November 8th, somewhere in there. Um, so any Delaware LBTs, <laughs> yes, it's a ways out. Um, we're going to be giving away two registrations for that as well. So as it gets a little bit closer, um, we'll be giving away those. So any Delaware, or if you're just kind of, I know Delaware is a very small state, so geographically speaking. So if you're nearby and you're going to attend. What's next, what's next to Delaware? Is it New uh, Jersey? Well, there's, there's the Delmarva. So uh, Maryland, Virginia, Maryland, yeah. uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania is right there. Okay. So, um, 
anybody that's attending DVMA, I think I'm doing four talks. Um, we're going to be giving away two registrations. I think I think we will probably limit the giveaway to Delaware LVTs, just sure. since it's the Delaware BMA. But if you're going to attend, um, you know, we'll have some, I'll have some swag and all the normal stuff, and and hope to see you guys there. Um, otherwise, I think that's at least for me, uh, Ibex and. DVMA, those are my only in-person things the rest of the year. Do you have any other things? Not that I, not, not that I'm aware of. <laughs> training sessions for for work, um, ramping up some recovery trainings and doing doing those things, which are fun. Yeah. Um, but in terms of speaking, I think just IVEX is all I have left on my docket for, well, other than the VSPN one, but like the in-person things, I think IVEX is my last my last thing I have. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um. March, you got you've been designing some cool new stuff. Yes, I've been designing some more T-shirts, um, adding those to our to our list, and we're gonna start uh, advertising those uh, maybe once a week, uh, just to kind of get some more exposure to them. Yeah. Um, and if you know, we'll we'll keep. I'm gonna keep making T-shirts um, because it doesn't cost us anything to make the T-shirts. Mm -hmm. It's like it's not yeah. like we're making them and they're just sitting in storage. Right. It's right. it's something we make that gets printed on demand, and yeah. I, I think that's the best way to do it for us because for sure. I mean we haven't we haven't sold a ton of merch, um, but the people that have bought them uh, were we were sold very a ton of it to that. ourselves. <laughs> Yes, we have we have uh, we have uh, self promoted. That, I mean, that's the best way we self self promote. We don't we're not very good at self promotion, but um, wearing our own merch, I think, is is probably the easiest way that we do it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I'm working on um, oh, some yeah. candles. So I'm working with um, Loomis Candle Company, and I'll put, hold this up. So this is their IPA candle. They basically have tons of scents, and they sent me I think eight different samples, and this smells amazing um and the cool thing is is you can actually like customize it so this is an ipa smells very fruity it's very citrusy when it burns um but like i can email her and say hey um i also when i think of ipa i think of piney right like you know mm -hmm. that yeah. kind of piney west coast so they're going to add a little bit of pine to it as well mm -hmm. um and so i have like eight different samples of i think I think like five or six of them are beer scents. So I like, I have a pumpkin lager, um, I have a peppermint stout or, um, like a few of those kinds of things, <laughs> an oatmeal stout, and then some coffee flavors too. Um, interesting. A, Very interesting. They have a fresh coffee one that I burn in the morning while I'm here at work. It literally smells like a pot of coffee right on my work nice. desk. Um, and so basically we're trying a few of them out and again, we get to come up with the names and the descriptions and then, We'll basically be selling them on our website um, a little bit down the road. We're going to pick, I'm going to pick a handful of them and, and have those available too. So um, if you, especially if you work from home um, yeah. or if you just burn candles at home, we'll have that as an option too. So um, they'll be like, then, they'll be like Christmas gifts. Yeah, absolutely. So it'll be still a little ways down the road yet, but something we're working on too. So a lot of fun there. Yeah. So um, I think that's about all we have. I think that's all I got. Yeah. So caffeinators, um, we hope you guys are well. Um, it's, uh, let's see here. This is Sunday, July 2nd. So happy fourth. Um, yeah. we're going to upload this today. Um, Canada day was yesterday. So to our friends to the North, happy Canada day. Um, and we hope you guys are well, and we will talk to you guys again soon from the vet tech cafe next door. All right. Bye guys.